So, okay. welcome back, everybody. Um, so you, you had a few um, sort of practice exercises to do, and I thought I'd ask if there were start especially with some things you were unsure about or got stuck on um, before we move on to some new material. So, um, uh, so Jackie, anything that you wanted to ask about relating well, to work and yesterday stuff? I, I still found it hard to the pronunciation of Sai. Say. <laughs> Actually, I saw the email. There's um. Yeah. And then when I got into the homework, I had a real hard time just pronouncing the row with the rough breathing followed by uh, a theta. I was just, just like, whoa, my well, just mouth doesn't work. That's a good that point. Way. The row followed by with the rough breathing. A lot of people don't even worry about the rough breathing. Just tr just say it as an R. Okay. Because if you try to say R H, that's kind of unnatural for us English speakers. So um, most people that I hear pronouncing Greek just say it with an R and don't even worry about the H. So I I wouldn't let that get in the way. Okay. The two X's, right? There's the Xi. Um, yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. I'm going to draw green so we so we um, distinguish between the two. So there's the psi, and then there's the chi. So let me draw let me draw them uh, separately. Um, okay. Actually, you know what? Can you yep. move your hand from that for one second? Okay. Sure. Claudia's just setting up the uh, the tablet. And I saw a little. Uh, I think. Was it was it Janet or was it Sarah sent a little one way that helps you remember which is which? Sarah did. Sarah, yeah. So anything like that is really helpful. Little uh, memory aids are great. Uh, even Sarah, was that your little poem about about the cat? Yeah, well, it, it's not mine, but it's one I've come across before, which uh, quite nice. Which, and yeah. Claudia has a cat here, and I have three cats, so we're 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 really into cats. Yes. Okay, so here's. Here's the xi. It's kind of curly everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So you normally write that in English as as that, right? Right. Now, uh, English speakers call that the letter xi, and so I'm pronouncing it as k s i, right? Xi. Okay. Xi. So. We, we don't have words in English that start with the letter X that are pronounced with a X. We do have words like xylophone, but we pronounce them with a Z, right? Yeah. But we have to try and pronounce this as a X, because here's an example. There's a word, an important word in Homer. Oh, Zena. Um, let me put a circumflex there. Yeah. Xenos. Yes, Xenos. And um, sorry, my Xi there isn't that great. But anyway, um, anyone know what that word means? By the way, Xenos. Yeah, sure. We've we've been Absolutely. doing this word, yes, <laughs> lots of time. Yeah. Yes, so so for a guest, stranger, foreigner. Right. Yeah. And um, in in another dialect, it's Xenos, and we have the word. Xenophobia, which we're all unfortunately familiar with, um, fear of foreigners. So, so anyway, that's a word beginning with with x, xenos. What do you think, Jackie? Yeah. Okay. And then here's the other letter, which I'll draw like this. Oh, that's not a great. Let me try another one. I need practice on this. Uh, it's not much better. But anyway. It's so nice. Looks better, yeah. Does it look better? Well, now you're very gentle. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we normally, I forget whether our book wrote it with a K or a CH. I grew up doing it with a CH. Some people do it with a KH, but, oh, brother. Either way, you pronounce it chai. So, so that's, you have to roll that. You have to roll that first. Ha. Like uh, Sarah would be good at that. That's like Loch Loman, right? <laughs> the Loch Ness monster, or Johann Sebastian Bach. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, 
This one's actually, if you want to get technical, called a fricative because there's friction in the back of your throat. Okay. Huh. Uh, uh, so, Graham, I yes. just have a, I just have a question. Uh, yeah. In French, we would say "xi" and "ki." Is it okay? Yes, yes, it is okay. And actually, when we read them in Greek yesterday, that's how we pronounced them in Greek. We said "xi" okay. and "chi." Okay. But in English, we normally say, well, I normally. What do you say, Claudia? Yes, yeah, so both ways. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, I normally say "xi" and "chi," but but Helen, "xi" and "chi." It's fine. The main thing is the consonant part. It has to be different, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. X and ch. And you'll probably find every now and then there'll be a word, and it makes a difference which one you say. If you say the wrong consonant, then the wrong word will come out. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking actually of the word. Uh, actually, here's a word. And we're going to write two Greek words here. Chodos. That word. Oh, Kronos. Yeah. So that's Kronos, and then, Kronos. and then the same word, Kron... but with that. How would we say the second one? Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this one is. Um, <sighs> you want to say this word? Kronos. Yeah. <laughs> Kronos, oh. and this the first one. Kronos. Just Kronos. So Kronos oh. and Kronos. Oh boy, that's yeah. that's low for me. That's kind of similar to us, but well, uh, well, you probably know the second one, do you? Kronos. No. Yeah, the God. Actually, the second one. The second one is is time, and the, yeah. the first one is the God. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So actually, I, I realize I'm trying to distinguish between this x. So I, I didn't actually come up with a word beginning with x, but I did come up with a word beginning with k and contrasting it with h. Right? So um, there's actually three sounds there's h as in chronos, k as in chronos, and then x as in. Xenos. So does that does that make some sense? Yeah. So, uh, Jackie, you said uh, you reminded us there's two letters that get confused, but there's even actually potentially a, th a third that we need to keep them all straight. Okay. And it's hard because English we only really have we have k k and 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 we have x but x never occurs at the beginning of a word, only uh, in the middle of a word, right? And then in English, we don't even have this ch at all unless we go to Scotland or, or Europe. Now, that's interesting, though, that those three words, which are really hard for me to distinguish, but those are the ones that if you have a gamma before, then you get a n. That's a true. Gamma. If you that's have a gamma... Stay together like that. Yes, if you have a gamma before a kappa, or if you have a gamma before... Xi, and if you have a gamma before a chi, yeah, yes, the gamma becomes like an ng, a ng. Yeah, so I guess because it's all a similar sound. They are similar. They're all in the right, the same part of the back of the mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yes. Okay. Good questions. Um, let's keep moving. Helen, do you have any specific things that came up from um, yesterday? No, just from the homework because I went on the on YouTube and then I tried to listen to Professor Nige reading the Iliad, and uh, this is wonderful, but uh, quite difficult. <laughs> well, you didn't think it was going to be easy, did you? <laughs> like <laughs> Professor Nige, it's difficult. <laughs> right, but isn't he so wonderfully encouraging, though? Yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. And then yeah. I went and uh, you know and looked at also the Odysseus, you know, yeah. the Odyssey, and uh, that was very, very helpful. I think it's easier to read the first lines of the Odyssey. Okay, we're going to look at we'll look at one or other or even both today. But mm -hmm. but thank you. Um, we, uh, Claudia and I were looking at a, a Gregory Nash reading um, from the Iliad. 
And he's actually read it a couple of different ways, so I'm not sure which way you read. Uh, I, I read the three three ways. He they, they were three three different ways, and then I looked at the three different ways. Wonderful, wonderful. Because <laughs> as you know, languages are always changing and evolving. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, one of the ways Greg Greg reads it is maybe as it would have been pronounced in the fifth century, and another is how it might have been pronounced in the 8th century and the two are, are different so the main thing is to have one way of reading it and to, to get some kind of fluency so that's so that's really good. J Janet how about you any questions or comments? Oh I I did not recently watch uh, Professor Nash um, but I, I have uh, in the past um, Yeah. Uh, the reading of it uh, the, the meter is going to uh, be a problem for me. Sarah knows really well, uh, so the okay. fluency the fluency will be a meter issue for me. Well, you're right. Meter is a whole other issue that we'll get to at some point. Yeah. I don't even remember which chapter in the book they get to meter, but uh, it's something that we should be aware of, but not not worry about too much right now. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, Sarah, any uh, questions, comments, queries? Um, no, I think it, it, was, it was being aware of where the stresses come and, um, and, and keeping my diphthong straight, I think. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you see a combination of vowels and it is a diphthong and sometimes it isn't. But it's always with right. your iota or an upsilon is the second letter. So that's, that's actually been helpful. I haven't actually tweaked that, so, so that's been quite helpful. Yes, yes. The second element of any diphthong has to be either iota or upsilon. As it is in English, really, that would be the equivalent would be uh, English diphthongs have to end with a with an I usually or a, a U. But anyway, okay. Um, Bill, any any um, anything you wanted to ask or mention? Um, I really appreciated the help with the accents yesterday. I just never really got that. And understanding what all those squiggly marks are on that, that was helpful <laughs> to me. And I thought exercise nine is helping me start to really understand the declinations better. Uh, Which I, exercise I was that? 19. Uh, oh, you mean uh, section 19? Yeah. Uh, let me just, that's in, um, let me just look at that. Epi and hypo in yeah, particular. Yeah, yeah. 